All right, uh, E.J. Daigle here, Dean of Robotics and Manufacturing. Talk a little bit today about uh, control loops and AGV navigation. Um, so let's get into this a little bit. The first lesson that we did uh, when using the micro basic script and uh, the mini bot was open loop. What that means is we had no concerns as to where the vehicle actually was. We said drive straight for five seconds, turn right, drive straight for another four seconds, turn right. Um, the trouble with that is you have no feedback. If there's wheel slippage, um, if there's a different load on the vehicle, there's different things that can cause you to get out of a line. And as you your timing and your errors associated with the timing and the uh, uh, non-uniform performance of the AGV, as those errors stack up, uh, you'll get further and further off from your target. So, so open loop just isn't gonna work for us. So we're gonna go to a closed loop navigation system at this point. All right, so let's talk about the different versions of closed loop that we can run. And before we get into what we're gonna use, I wanna just talk about, you guys see closed loop uh, control all the time. Uh, so control system that's closed loop monitors the process variable until it's out of range turns the control variable on, uh, a lot of times at the maximum value until the process variable has been met. So I've got kind of a, a neat little example over here. So pretend this is, what are we looking at here? I guess this is temperature. Maybe this would be uh, the equivalent of like your furnace. You know, we've got a lot of different examples, a furnace, a refrigerator, water heater, anything, um, your refrigerator is an example. If I need, if I have it set at 40 degrees, and it gets up to 41 degrees, the compressor kicks on and it starts cooling it down and it maybe gets down to 39 degrees. And this is why you'll hear your compressor on your refrigerator cycle. It'll turn on, it'll turn off, it'll turn on, it'll turn off. Um, so when we're dealing with a control loop, um, you can kind of see what's happening here. If this is my set point right here, this red represents my, my set point. Um, this is actually what's happening with my process variable is that my process variable falls to a certain level and at that point, it triggers the control variable to turn on. Now, in this particular case, if this is my furnace, let's say as an example, all that's going to happen is the furnace is just going to blow out hot air. And now the temperature in the room is going to keep going up, up, up until it reaches a certain point. And now the furnace is going to say, look, it's time to, to shut off. So I turn on here and I turn off here. And so the furnace just turns on and off. It doesn't necessarily have any uh, way to really zero in on the temperature. And to be honest, what you're looking at here, um, there's kind of this gap, you know, uh, from let's say here to here. So I turned off the furnace here and then the temperature started to fall. And then I turned on the furnace here. This gap that we're talking about right here is what we call the dead band. Um, and it's very important when we're using a simple on off control to use a dead band. If I don't use a dead band, then what happens is um, the compressor, the uh, you know air compressor, the heater on the water heater, the gas, whatever it is, it's gonna constantly cycle, meaning it's gonna try to maintain you right at that 150 degrees. And if you go to 149.9, it's gonna turn on and 150.1, it's gonna turn off. And the problem with that is it's gonna to cycle too much. So in this particular case, we're saying, okay, maybe the, this might be a good example, of maybe water heater or something like that. Um, actually, it's really high, it's 150 degrees C. Maybe this is a process at 3M where they're trying to keep a chemical process at a certain temperature. But what we're saying is, as long as we're in this range between here and here, we're okay. And so we create a dead band and the dead band is where I take no action, meaning um, I am going to heat up until I get to here, but then I'm going to let it fall and I'm not going to do anything, even though it's falling below my, my target right here, I'm going to let it fall down and then I'm going to have this kind of sawtooth pattern. All right, now let's look at what we did here. We did one other thing here, go to my pointer options for this. Um, we did one other kind of crazy chaotic thing here is we also changed the set point here. So I don't know if you noticed this. Um, so the set point was 150. Now what we did was we adjusted the set point. So at some point, again, think of this, maybe the your, uh, your thermostat in your house and you decide you want to turn up the heat. Hopefully you're not turning it up to 175 degrees C, but maybe you're turning it up to 75 degrees C. 
So when you made that adjustment on the thermostat to the set point, now what happened was the, the uh, furnace said, oh, I need to turn on. I need to be on right now because I need to start heating up to get up there. And so now it's going to start heating up and then it's going to turn off again. And when it turns off, it's going to start falling again. And that's that sawtooth pattern right there. And again, I just have a different dead band now. And now the dead band is, is the same, um, but it's, it's built around this 175 degree uh, set point. So the, the beauty of the, the simple on off is it is that it's very simple. I'll fall below this level, uh, you know, if my set point is 75 degrees and I get down to 73, I'm going to kick the furnace on. Uh, maybe it'll take me up to 76 degrees, then it'll shut off, then it'll start falling down to whatever temperature and kick back on again. That's the way a lot of simple on off controls work. You know, the furnace, the refrigerator, the water heater, your air compressor. Your air compressor works the same way. You know, your air compressor compresses the, uh, the gas in the tank, uh, the fluid in the tank, until it's up to maybe 125 PSI. And then you use it, use it, use it, use it. Maybe it gets down to 90 PSI, it kicks on again. Um, but you know, it doesn't necessarily, and maybe, and maybe it's different settings. I'm not saying it's 125 and 90 in your particular case, but it is some dead band that determines that. So that's the simplest of, of, uh, closed loop control. Now you'll hear terms like P, uh, PI, PID, and you'll hear about these control loops and, and they're, I think people tend to make them more complex than they really need to be. Uh, for what we're going to do in this class, we're going to use what's called a P only control. Okay. And what that means is we're going to do proportional control. And this is far superior to on-off control um, because what happens is the amount of change that we're going to apply to the control variable is in proportion to the amount of error. So rather than just blasting the house with, you know, you know, 80 degree heat, trying to heat up to 75 degrees, we might say, well, let's just, you know, we only need to heat up one degree. Let's just do a little bit of what we need. And when, when, uh, when fine tuning and precise control is important, when we don't want a dead band, um, you know, especially in the case of an AGV, um, think, think of an autonomous vehicle traveling down the interstate. Um, you want that vehicle to stay in the lane. You don't want to say, oh, well, if I go, you know, three feet this way or three feet that way, it's fine. Um, no, we want to be much tighter than that. So that fine tuning is, is one of the unique characteristics of a proportional control loop is it really does allow me uh, to do some fine tuning. So that's a very important feature. And what you'll see with the proportional control loop is you'll see the uh, the actual, um, oh, where am I going here? Why am I doing that? There we go, go back. There we go, let's go back. I gotta get my pen back up here for some reason. All right, so what you'll see is you'll see if, if I create a set point now, is what'll happen is I'll approach that set point. I might have a little bit of overshoot and then I'll say, okay, I need to, uh, to fix that. So I'm going to subtract a little bit and then I'll end up with a little bit of undershoot. But eventually what's going to what's going to happen is hopefully I'm going to zero in on this thing and be nice and clean and tight. And the the amount of error is going to get very, very small. And P only will do a good job of that. Um, but to do it with some more advanced processes, we might need the P, the I and the D. And we can do that with the with the AGV technology as well. But I always like to start off with something simple. On uh, a proportional controller, you're going to find out, especially in the AGV simulator, it's going to work really well in the real world uh, where we've got, you know, like where I'm driving around on the carpet and stuff like that, or if I'm driving it outside on ice and I get some wheel slippage, um, then P only might not be enough at that point. All right, so before we can can initiate that, that P only uh, control, um, and I was going to, surprised I didn't get, oh, it's, it's coming up. Um, before we can initiate that, I want to talk a little bit about what a subroutine is. So what we're going to do is when we look at the magnetic sensor today, we're going to get, we're going to essentially create three sub programs, three subroutines that we can call. One of them is going to be to get some inputs. I want to get some inputs from the sensor. Am I detecting the magnetic tape? That's important. If I am, then I can go ahead and start following the track. If I'm not detecting the magnetic tape, I probably need to stop the vehicle and not allow it to go on. Uh, that's an unsafe condition. So I need to update the out, the inputs. I need to know is you know is the mag tape there? You know is that is that true? Um, you know is it true? I also need to know is is the uh, what's that tape position? You know what's the tape position? Is it 
Is it right in the middle? Is it too far left, too far right? So this will be some sort of integer value that I can use to make decisions. So this update input is important. The follow track is where, where I will determine what the throttle and what the steering are going to be. And that's going to be get based upon what? Well, it's going to be based upon my inputs. These are my inputs right here, right? And those are going to help me to determine what my throttle and my steering are. And then the last thing is I'm going to update my outputs. Um, so this is where I will actually tell the vehicle, here's what I want you to do. And then in this particular case, I'm going to wait 100 milliseconds. And then I'm going to go back to the top and loop forever. So essentially my main routine, this would be my main routine, is going to execute this, it's going to execute this, it's going to execute this, it's going to wait, and it's going to go back up to the top, and it's going to execute this again, execute this again, execute this again, execute this again, then go back up to the top, and the same thing. This thing will run forever, and it'll just keep doing what it needs to do to make the things work kind of like a state machine uh if this is happening okay i'm gonna go here if this is happening i'm gonna go here um if you know my input says uh no magnetic tape um then i may need i may need to in my follow track instruction i might need to have something that says hey set the throttle and steering to zero just stop the vehicle and then go back up and update the inputs again is there magnetic tape there now oh there is okay let's set the throttle and steering according to what whatever we calculate all right, so subroutines. This is how we call those subroutines. We say go sub. I'm going to pull up my eraser here real quick. I make a mess out of my slides here with this, but fortunately it's all digital ink, so it's pretty easy to get rid of. Um, so from my main code, all I'm going to do is I'm going to call go sub. And when I call go sub, it's essentially going to go to that particular subroutine, execute the code in that subroutine, and then when it's done executing that code, it's going to return. So it went out to whatever the update input subroutine was. That's over here somewhere, and it goes and does whatever update inputs tells it to do, right? Um, and when it's done doing that chunk of code, it comes back and it goes to that next item in the main routine. Then it's going to go out and do that one. And then it's going to come back and go to that next item, and so on and so on and so on. All right, so let's talk about that Minibot magnetic sensor. So as we look at the Minibot, you can see the guts of it here. This one's kind of messy, but uh, uh, functional. This is the one I was running in my intro video, uh, one that I wanted to, get to build with you guys. Um, but this is your magnetic sensor right here that's mounted to the front of the Minibot right there. All right, one of the things that you'll notice is there's a direction arrow, and you can kind of see it right here. It kind of looks like this. And it's saying this is the direction of travel. Um, so that's very important. Um, you'll see it on my sensor down here. But when I, when I want to get tape position, okay, um, tape detection is just true or false. Is there magnetic tape underneath? Great. Uh, tape position is a different animal altogether. Um, tape position actually says, where am I, where is the sensor on the tape? So as an example, if I'm driving straight, I really want that tape to be right in the middle here, right? That's where I want my tape to reside. Um, if for some reason the tape was over here, okay, so I, so the vehicle's tracking and the tape is like over here somewhere, then it needs to maybe steer this way a little bit to try to get that, that back into the center, right? But what's interesting about this is it's going to give me a number. Well, if this is negative 50, then this would be like negative 25, and this would be positive 25. And I know on the quiz this week, I'm going to give you some question where I'm going to ask you to calculate this. Um, and it's not going to, you're going to have a range, so you don't have to worry a whole lot. So maybe this is a negative 20. This is the integer I'm going to get in my tape position command. It'll always be an integer, but because I know that negative 20 and I know I want to be at zero, I know how much error, you know, my, for, for this particular case, my set point is always going to be zero and I want my process variable to be zero. So my control variable in this particular case would, would be to add you know, maybe plus 20 or depending on my gain, how quickly I want to make that adjustment. I want to do whatever it's going to take to get this vehicle back to that side. And oh, guess what? Plus 20 might steer me in that direction, right? Because we know that plus 20 um, in a mixed mode, and we'll have to play around with this. And sometimes I confuse myself on the pluses and minuses here. But if you remember the minus, as we looked at the, the grid here, um, minus was down in this direction and plus was up in this direction. So a plus would actually steer me this way and get me closer 
to that magnetic strip, right? Because I'd start steering in that direction. Um, and then you could do the same thing over here, right? You could say, okay, well, what if the magnetic strip was right over here? If the magnetic strip was right over here, well, now I'm at a plus 50. And now I might need to steer back the other way, you know, so I might need a, a negative 50 to get back to zero. Um, and that would just be assuming a gain of one on our proportional controller, um, essentially giving a steering command that is proportional to the error. You know, so where this is the this is the what I would call the error. How much off of zero am I? Um, this is where I want the tape to be. So I really want that tape to reside right here. If I'm driving in a straight line, and I'll be happy all day long. All right. So what does that mean? If I was going to create a simple, a very very simple um, algorithm to uh, to to change the steering command, you know, if I created a a uh, Oop, I lost that there. If I created a uh, some sort of, I don't know why that happened there. There we go. And I got a little control there. There we go. If I created some sort of um, command called steering, you know, what would I do to potentially uh, to get that? Let me just get out of here for a second. Uh, yeah, I got that little control, but that's fine. Um, what would I do to, to make that command? And so in this case, I might say, well, you know, I'm going to have my P gain be, let's say, positive 2,000. Um, I think it's probably going to have to be negative. Well, I don't even know. Let's find out. So let's say that we know that this is zero again, right? The tape was there. And if the tape position is zero and my gain is 2,000, well, I don't need to steer, do I? Because I'm, I'm right on top of the tape, right in the middle. Um, so my steering would be zero, okay? However, if the tape was, let's say, over here on this side, okay? And maybe we'll call this, remember, this was zero. This was negative 50 over here. And this was positive 50 on this end. So if I'm at uh, here, maybe I'll call this negative 35. If the tape position is negative 35, um, and my gain is plus 2,000, this is where we gotta start thinking about what that gain's gonna be. Now you might say, well, why is the gain so big? Well, the reason why the gain is so big is because remember, we can't deal with integers, or excuse me, we can't deal with real numbers, we can only deal with integers. So if I want a gain of 1.5, that's not gonna work. It's gonna truncate that down to one. However, if I make my gain 1,500, I can do all the math in here and then later on subtract out by a thousand to make my steering command. So that's an easy, or divide out by a thousand to make my steering command. So that's an easy way to make that work. Um, let me pull up my eraser here real quick. Pointer options, eraser, there we go. All right, so now let's take a look at, at what's gonna happen. I believe, based upon what we're seeing here with that tape over there, what we're going to want is we're going to want this vehicle to steer in this direction to get back towards the tape, right? And we know as we look at um, what our steering commands are here, if I want to go in that counterclockwise direction, I need to go positive, don't I? Um, so in order to make that happen, I better be getting a positive command out here. So let's go ahead and hit this and see what we get. We get negative 35, 35 negative. Oop, don't have my keypad up here. There we go. Five. Uh, you know what? Something weird is going on here. Give me a second. Uh, task manager. All right, I'll keep my ink annotations and bounce back in here. Just had a little lock up. I had like a control button that was messing up. Okay, I should be good now. So let's hit here. And we've got 35 negative. Let's pull that guy up here, 35. And we need the negative, uh, no, not minus. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, da, da. 35 and da, da. where's my negative sign on here? Oh, here's 35 negative. We're going to multiply that by, uh, I just got to hit equal once here. Okay. 35 negative, And we're going to multiply that by 2000 positive. All right. So that's going to give me 70,000 negative. And now one of the things you'll notice about that 70,000 negative is if I've created this equation here, so negative 70,000, which was my tape position, negative 35 times 2,000, gave me negative 70,000. I divide that by 1,000. 
and I get negative 70. Um, there's a problem there, right? Well, the problem there is negative is actually going to steer me which direction? It's going to steer me the wrong direction. And I'm going to go further away from that tape. So what I can tell, and I kind of guessed this a minute ago. You might have caught me trying to guess this. I think these need to be negative right here. Oh, I lost my, my stuff there. Let's discard my, my stuff there and uh, go back in. Can I discard that? Yeah, I can. So negative 35. All right, so where were we? Right here, that's where our tape was, negative 35. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my proportional gain negative 2,000. So when I was at zero right here, I still have a zero steering command because I'm right on top of it, right? But as soon as I'm at negative 35, um, now I'm getting, uh, let's see, negative 35 times negative 2,000, 2,000. So that's a, that's a positive 70,000 divided by 1,000. And now I get a positive 70 steering command. So keeping that gain at negative 2,000, I now get a positive 70 steering command. So that positive 70 is going to take me in this direction. Now you'll notice what I've done by making it a 2,000. It's really a gain of 2. It's a gain of 2 because I'm able to divide by 1,000. But I could have also done a negative 2,500, which would have been a gain of 2.5, right? Um, because of that. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to start steering towards that strip again because now I'm going in the right direction. I'm going in that positive direction. As we recall, positive direction on mixed mode requires me to go that way to get there. And same thing would go if I was going on the other side now. Let's go and uh, give me my little pointer there. Let's get a different color up here just so we can look at a different version of this. Uh, ink color. Let's go purple. And let's put a strip right here, uh, right here. So it's not as dramatic, but I am off a little bit. Maybe this is like positive 10, right? This was, this was zero, this was positive 50, and this was negative 50. So just remember that. Now I'm at positive 10 tape position. I'm not changing my gain. My gain is still negative 2,000, but I know that my 10 times negative 2,000, oops, I make that a negative there, uh, divided by a thousand. So now on top I get negative twenty thousand divided by a thousand and I get a, uh, a negative twenty. So my steering command is negative twenty. Well does that make sense? Well I think it does because in the negative direction I'm now steering this way back towards that strip. So the sensor is going to start steering and heading back towards that strip which is right here. So we're trying to center that strip right on the center of the the magnetic sensor. So that's how we drive the vehicle around. If you remember back from here, basically this vehicle is going to drive. It's going to move this steer this way or steer this way, trying to find and maintain that strip right in the middle is our goal. All right. So now let's talk about the programming. We're going to write a little bit of code here in a second. Um, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I think we're sitting pretty good. Um, yep. Uh, a couple of quick things. I think I mentioned this earlier, but maybe not enough. Uh, let's discard my ink annotations. I think I don't think that those will go away, though. I can click on them and they'll go away. Um, I think I'll just make the notes down here on the what's important. A couple of things, a couple of commands that we're going to use, and we're creating the commands. One of them is going to be called tape detect. Um, tape detect is going to tell me if there's magnetic tape there and the command in microscript is MGD. So I'll basically detect magnetic tape, um, underscore MGD. Uh, the other main command that we're going to use is tape position. And actually, I don't even know that that's what they call them. That's what I'm going to call them. And that's going to be MGT. So that's going to be magnetic and then uh, tape or, or track the position. Um, that's This is the number, this one here is going to either be true or false. So this is going to be either true or false up here. This just tells me, is it there, yes or no. This one's going to give me that negative 50 to positive 50 number that I'm so concerned with because that's what's actually going to allow me to drive the vehicle, which is what's really, really important to me, right? All right, so let me get out of here real quick and let's start talking about what we're going to go be up to 
am, I'm going to open up just Notepad is what I'm going to work in. And I kind of recommend Notepad. It's an easy place to just put code and um, it'll work really, really, really nice for you. All right, so let me just move my other stuff out of the way here so I know what we're doing. All right, so I'll just pull up Notepad. And I think, what do I want to do here? I think I'm fine with that. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just do this. I'll just kind of pull it up to the side. I don't need the whole screen for this. Uh, probably as much as I, I'll use as much as I can. I just don't want to be all over the map on this. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is, as always, I want to get some comments up top. So I'm going to call this ENGR2210 uh, uh, Lab002. And I will warn you ahead of time, you know, I don't like doing labs in this manner, but in this particular case, I think I'm going to write the majority of the code and explain it as I do it. So we're just going to immerse you into this. Um, my recommendation, I'm not going to give you a copy of the code because I do want you to type type it in and I do want you to comment it and I do want you to think about what it is that you're actually doing with the code. Um, but then I'll, for the lab, I'll try to make it so that you have to figure out how to tune the proportional. It's going to be easy, um, but the biggest uh, difficulty here will be just following along, uh, maybe uh, writing what I'm doing here. So we're going to follow a magnetic magnetic strip. You know what? And let me uh, let me show you something real quick here before we do that. So the the uh, the program that you're going to write is actually going to be designed to follow this strip right here. Now, before we get too deep, um, we've got this big loop and your lab um, will be just to follow that loop. And I think I've got some code in here that probably works right now. Um, it's running really slow, but that's fine. Um, but as it's running, one of the things I want you to note is as it gets to the end here, you'll see my tape position command down here. So right now my tape position is zero. That means it's right in the middle. If I pause it when it gets to the end here, what you're going to see is as that tape position rotates, because I'm moving slow, it's, it's uh, not moving a lot. But you can see my tape position's at two and my steering's at negative 24. So I got a lot of gain on this thing right now. Um, I'm going to change it just a little bit. I don't know why I've got so much gain in there, but I'll put in a, a thousand and I'll put in just a little bit more throttle just so it doesn't take all day to get there. Uh, two, 200 maybe. Just something in the ballpark there. And hit save. All right, let's go ahead and play that again. Um, I do want to pause it though. So right now, if you look, you'll notice that my, uh, my vehicle, the little red dot, is where I'm sensing the tape position on the magnetic sensor. If I let it go a little further, the gray line represents a navigation strip. Gray line, navigation strip. If I go a little bit further, boom, the blue line, you'll see a little green dot now. I don't know if you can see that or not, that little green dot. That blue line represents a marker strip. A marker is different from a navigation strip. A navigation strip is what we call straight polarity. The mag magnetic uh, polarities are straight. And then the, um, that's for the navigation strip. And then the marker strip is what we call reverse polarity. I don't care that, you know, lining up the north and south or south and north or whatever. I don't care about that. What I, what I care about is you understand that the two are opposite polarity. So one side is straight polarity and the other side is reverse polarity. Um, so when, when we're building tracks, this blue one represents a reverse polarity marker. The gray one represents a straight polarity navigation. And then you'll see over here things that we can do with this, right? The vehicle can track around this thing and it'll drive around just fine. I hope it may lose it. I don't remember what, what my gains are. Um, as it turns around, there we go. You can see my, my, uh, my gain right now is one. It's, or it's a, a negative a thousand, whatever it is. So I can see my tape position is 24 and my steering then is directly proportional one to one negative 24. So it's trying to steer more counterclockwise to maintain that magnetic strip. And as I let it go around, it'll just continue to do that. In the real world, what we might use these marker strips for is we might do some logic with these. We might say, okay, um, basically this thing's driving around the shop floor and it's stopping in certain locations. Maybe the blues uh, represent stopping points where it can stop and pick up uh, things. It can pick up a pallet and drive it to shipping and receiving. It can pick up uh, 
uh, raw materials and drive it to the machine shop. Um, or in some cases, maybe it could uh, sense this strip and say, okay, my battery's low. I'm going to turn off here, acquire this strip, stop here and charge batteries. And it could plug itself into the wall and charge the batteries. So you can see how these, these, um, these navigation strips and these marker strips do different things. For the purpose of this lab, we're doing nothing with marker strips. We are only using navigation strips in this lab. Uh, the next lab will use some marker strips so that you guys can do some different things with them. All right, so we need to get into the code now. Um, so there's my program comments. Uh, it's uh, ENGR2210. You probably put your name in here too. You know, that'd be a good place to put your name. Um, then we're going to start writing some code. And by this time, hopefully all you guys are at least a little bit familiar. So we're going to uh, explicitly define our variables. Uh, <laughs> I don't need to write explicitly. I can just write explicit. Um, so it's option explicit is what we're going to use. And then we're going to define our individual variables. So define in memory, DIM. Uh, we're going to define throttle as integer. Um, why? Because we need to tell it how fast to go, don't we? We're going to define in memory um, proportional gain. I'm going to do this as, um, I'll do it as P underscore G-A-I-N as an integer. Again, this is going to be an integer. This is going to be like that, me putting in that 1,000 or 12,000. You know, if I go back to that thing uh, for the PowerPoint, we actually define that here, right? We plugged in a P gain, and that became what we're going to use to do our steering command. Same type of deal. So P gain is an integer. We're going to define in memory um, tape detect is what I'm going to call it. Um, very common uh, methodology to, instead of separating words or putting spaces, to just capitalize the first letter of that next word. Tape detect, though, is only telling me if something's there. So we're going to define that as a Boolean. All right. And then we'll define in memory tape position. Uh, tape position as an integer. That's the one that's going to tell me that negative 50 to positive 50. That's very, very important to me. And I'm actually going to put over here, I'm going to put uh, uh, option explicit. I'll leave a blank there. And I'm just going to put a comment over here. This is going to be where I declare my variables. Declare variables. That's all I'm doing, declaring variables. And do I need any other? Oh, I probably need a steering one, right? Because we did that over here. Um, remember, we, we uh, used the proportional gain in the tape position to determine what my steering command was going to be. So dim, we'll call this steering. Uh, guess what? It was an integer, right? So we're going to continue to use it as an integer. And then I feel pretty good. Um, now for this one, our, proportion, our first proportional gain uh, example, I don't think we'll slow down the throttle. We will just set a constant throttle. So I'm going to set throttle at, and I have no idea what to use. I'm just going to pick an arbitrary number like uh, 100, just something slow that I think I can mess with. I will tell you, if you were out in the industry and you had an AGV that was losing track, there's probably one of a couple of things that you're going to, you're going to mess with. Um, typically, one of the first things you're going to look at is proportional gain. Um, usually we like AGVs to run slow. We don't want them to run fast around the factory and run into people and people not be able to get out of the way and things like that. And safety works better when things are running slower. Um, so I would probably attack proportional gain if I was having a problem with an AGV losing track or something like that. But another thing I might look at is throttle. I might even slow it down a little more if an AGV was losing track. Uh, then I'm going to add P gain. I think I did P underscore gain, didn't I? Yeah, P underscore gain. And I'll set that to a thousand. Now remember, we don't have integers, so when I do that steering command, I'm actually going to divide by a thousand. So when I divide by a thousand, this will actually just be a a one. Um, and I'll, I'll make a note over here so I don't forget that. Uh, divide by one thousand for steering command. Hopefully you guys remember why that is. The reason why that is is because that's going to be uh, allows me to put a, a uh, floating point number in there. I can put 2,500 in there and divide it by 1,000 and, and get what I need. Um, okay, so I feel pretty good with those. Now, what we're going to do next is what we talked about here. Um, we're going to we're going to go ahead and define our main loop. Uh, where was our main loop? Right here. We've got our top 
we're going to have our, our states that we're going to go to. We're going to always be updating the inputs. Then the next thing we'll do is we'll follow the track and then we'll update the outputs. Um, so these are, it's kind of like our scan cycle of a, of a, of a controller, you know, do this, do this, do this, then do this, do this, do this. You don't want to update the outputs until you know what the inputs are, right? And you make decisions based upon those. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define top. Um, top just defines the top of my main routine. Then I'm going to call a subroutine. Now I haven't created a subroutine yet, so it's a little bit strange, but I'm, I'm going to create one called update inputs. That's where I'm going to go get my inputs. Then I'm going to create another subroutine called go sub uh, follow track. And then the last one is going to be a go sub update outputs. Now, is there any rhyme or reason to this? Not really. I mean, I'm trying to use names that make sense, but these, these are going to be my, this is my main routine, my main routine calls subroutines. Could I have called this go sub inputs, go sub track and go sub outputs? Absolutely you could. Because you're just going to go wherever that that subroutine is is in the in the code, and then we are going to put a wait in here. Um, what this means is I'm going to scan this every 100 millisecond. I'm not going to try to run this at the rate of the processor. Um, so every 100 milliseconds, I think will be fast enough. But that is something I could change. That's another thing I could change if I wanted to. Uh, uh, try to improve performance. And that's something you probably will change if you're doing a PI controller. Um, with a PI controller, we look at an integral term, right? Proportional means I'm just looking at the amount of error and I'm making a steering correction proportional to that amount of error. When I look at an integral term, I'm looking at the accumulated error over a set amount of time. So there may be some, some reasons to mess with that. And then the last thing is I'm going to go to the top. Go to uh, top and so this is just going to basically loop forever is what I'll call it loop forever you know I might say that this is my uh, my uh, uh, I don't know repeat every 100 milliseconds or something like that so I've got some good comments in there I've got my subroutines defined um, as far as the names of my subroutines. But now I gotta actually go out and get those inputs. There's only two inputs I'm concerned with. Number one is I wanna make sure the tape is there. So I wanna make sure I have tape there. If I don't have tape there, I wanna stop the AGV. I don't want it to run because that's a dangerous situation. And then the second one is I wanna use the tape position to steer the AGV. So those are gonna be my two inputs I'm gonna go get. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, update inputs. And uh, we put a little colon at the end of that. So when it calls go sub update inputs, it'll go down to here and execute the code that resides in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say tape detect equals. And now I have to go out and get that value. I mentioned it in here and I, I think I, I did. Um, da, da, da. I might have mentioned it in here and didn't uh, write it down. Yeah. Tape detect we're going to get from MGD. That's going to be a true or false. And then tape position we're going to get from MGT. If you're wondering where I got those from, uh, the actual data sheet for the magnetic sensor. So you can you could type in MGS 1600 magnetic sensor Robotech and you could find this in Google pretty quick. Um, but uh, I don't know that they call it tape detect to be to be honest with you. Um, control F. I know it's MGD and MGT. So MGD is uh, Read tr it's track detection, so it's going to be a true or false that the track is either there or it's not. And MGT, they got a different name as well, which is uh, track number. So it's going to uh, give me the uh, the number coming off the the left and right tracks. This this sensor is actually divided really into two sensors. So one side of it is going to be uh, negative fifty to zero, and then zero to fifty. Um, but we're just going to get that one number from negative 50 to positive 50. So it's MGD and MGT that we're worried about the most. I'll keep those open in case we want to go back and look at that data sheet some more. So I'm back in notepad now. So tape detect. And if I want to read an input, it's called get value. Okay. 
uh, get value, and we're going to go uh, underscore MGD. That's what it said in there, I think. I know it did. And this will be, uh, I'll call this uh, detect tape presence. I think this will help us. And, and the result on this is going to be true or false, right? So it's going to be true or false. And then the other one's going to be tape position. And again, why is it tape position? Because I created that integer as tape position. I could have just called it TP and TD if I wanted to. The only thing that matters for getting that value is the command get value and um, underscore MGT. This is what actually goes out and gets that negative 50 to positive 50 value. So this will read, uh, they call it tape track, I'm gonna call it tape position. And my result, this is going to be negative 50 to positive 50. At least that's what I'm hoping is going to come off of that. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to get my inputs and then I'm going to return. What return command does is return command says, hey, I'm done executing that subroutine. So when I got down here, I called the update input subroutine. I executed all this code. I got those values. I put them into those integers. And now I'm going to go back up here and go to follow track. That's the next item in my main code, right? Well, so then that's probably the next thing I want is I want a, a subroutine called follow, Oop, follow track. And follow track is where we're actually going to set up the, the steering now. And it's, it's actually very simple as well. You think this is, is difficult, it's really not. We've created a, an integer called steering and we're gonna say, you know what, steering, Steering, you are equal to. And this is where we go back to what did we do? I don't remember. We did, here we did. Tape position times the proportional gain divided by a thousand. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do uh, tape position. Be careful, these are uh, case sensitive on these variables. Uh, tape position multiplied by, so we need the asterisk uh, by uh, the proportional gain, which is P underscore gain. And then we're gonna divide that by 1000. So this is my, this is essentially my steering command, which is uh, a result of tape position and proportional gain. Now, if I want to change that proportional gain, that's really easy to do, right? I can always just go up here and say, you know what, instead of a thousand proportional gain, I want to make the correction faster. So I'm going to make it 10,000. Um, really, it's not 10,000, it's 10 or it's one or it's two. But again, we're, we're tricking it a little bit by using that, that, uh, that number. Then I'm going to return. Look how easy this is. This has not been a, a big deal as of yet. Update outputs is gonna be a little trickier, and I'll tell you what, it's, and really not, it's, it's not any trickier, but what I wanna do in update outputs, that's my next call, my next subroutine call is gonna be update outputs, is this is where I wanna take care of that one thing we talked about. Uh, we had some, some things we were concerned with. The AGV must maintain navigation strip. I think that's gonna happen based upon my steering command. Probably won't, but we'll find out. Uh, we will optimize speed and control. We will tune the P, the P algorithm as we start to run this and see how it's working, we can change the numbers around a little bit. Um, but the big one I wanna worry about is the safety. If I don't have a track, I want the AGV to stop. Well, we know how to, we know how to make the AGV stop, right? I mean, we've, we've done that in previous commands. We've said, okay, I'll just, I'll call the command for stopping the AGV. We, I can remember it from, from last week. It's set command and it's, um, Oh, what is it? It's uh, underscore G. That's for like the first channel, right? And this all is going to assume that you're in, in a mixed mode. One will be the first channel and that'll be for throttle. So if I want to stop it, I'm going to make that a zero. And then the set command um, underscore G for two, um, I want to make that a zero. So that would be your steering, you know, so this would be throttle and steering is what these would be. Now, a little, a little concerning here. I don't, you know, this isn't my normal throttle and steering, right? My normal throttle steering are going to come from throttle and steering. But if I, if I don't get, if I don't get the tape detect, 
this is what's going to stop my vehicle. So I'd call this throttle stop, steering stop, you know, if there's no tape detect. So I'm actually kind of alluding to what we need to do. If the tape detect is there, do this. If the tape detect isn't there, do this. So I've actually already come up with what I would call the, the else statement. So if there's no tape detect, I'm doing the else statement. But if there is tape detect, then I'm going to do this statement. So I'm going to do if, and I'm going to call it tape detect. I just got to look at my, my uh, syntax there. There it is, tape detect. Um, if it's equal to true, which is a Boolean, right? True or false. Then I don't want to set it to zero. I want to set command um, underscore G channel one. I want to set that to whatever my throttle is. And my throttle is an integer up there that I've called. So I can just call this throttle. And the steering then, well, we've already determined where the steering is going to come from, right? The steering is going to come from the follow track. Steering is equal to this. So that's going to get the steering command from there. So I'll go underscore G again, underscore G, comma two, and I'll call this steering. Whatever's in that steering uh, piece is what I'm going to get there. So if the tape detect is true, then give the throttle 100 and give the steering whatever you're getting based upon the error and the proportional gain. And that will steer the, the AGV around. But here's the deal. If you don't have tape detect true, then I'm in the else statement. And if you don't have tape detect true, then it's probably important that we go ahead and stop. Um, so, so with tape, with tape, um, navigate according to commanded throttle and steering. I'm trying to make this. You know, we're writing this as we go. Um, and then I'm going to take this off here real quick because I don't need to say throttle. I can see that they're throttle and steering there. Um, no tape. Stop AGV. You know, I capitalize that. That's kind of a safety item, right? And then um, because we didn't if else, then we need to do an end if. And then we'll do a return. And I believe, maybe I'm crazy here, but I believe, I'm just looking, I, I could do some printing of, uh, of stuff to the console. I don't think I'm going to do that right now. We'll, we'll leave this alone. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, file save as, and we'll just call this, um, uh, save it in a weird spot. I'll throw it on my desktop for now. Uh, actually, I'll go to Minibot Demos and Codes, Minibots, and we'll call this, uh, what did we call this, Lab 2? ENGR 2210 Lab 2. All right, I've got that saved somewhere. Now, for my sake, though, I probably am just going to copy that. I probably didn't even really need to save it. I'm just going to copy that from Notepad real quick. I'm going to take that over here and go back into the Robotech. I'm going to hit New, and I'm going to paste that guy in there. And let's see how this looks real quick here. All right, so I've got my my uh, variables. So that's what we did. We declared the variables. I do kind of like to clean up my uh, my comments here a little bit. Sometimes when you paste in out a notepad, um, your comments just kind of they don't be nice if they would tab over. If you had a nice software like a Notepad plus plus, which is designed more for the uh, programmer, um, it'll work out a little better. But this is just the bare bones Notepad from Microsoft. And so I've got those all in there. Go down. Yeah, you can get kind of finicky about the real estate, but I think we're pretty good here. Um, I'm going to hit build. Mm, I got a error on line 41, column five. So my end if has got an error. I think I think I need a space and there's what I need. There we go. Yeah, just a space. I just missed a space on the end if was all it was. So I got no errors. Now I do want to do one quick thing though before I do this. Um, I'm going to set my throttle to something big. I won't do that much. I'll do 500. 
throttle and my P gain, my proportional gain at a thousand. I build it, looks good. No errors, no warnings, everything looks good. Um, you will have to still come in. You'll wanna make sure you get the configuration file that, that I have on the, on the website. It's the same configuration file. Make sure you're set up for SVL 2360. Make sure you load the, the AGV SIM profile, which is the same one we've been using, so don't worry too much about that. Um, you'll need to make sure you get the track. I uh, put the track on the this week's um, assignment as well in the canvas there, and it's gonna be the mag loop track. That's the one you want, should look like that. Um, and now I can go ahead and hit play and see what happens here. I can see it's going fast, it's following the track good, and what happens is it reaches the corner it went the wrong direction. That's a little strange. Uh, let's try that again. I can reset it. Um, let me go into here real quick. And is it that maybe I don't have enough proportional gain? I'm going to do 5,000, which is a gain of five instead of instead of one. Do a build. That's fine. Everything's good. And I'll go ahead and do it again. And hopefully it may, I, I want to see it turn right at least. Let's stop here for a second. So I'm going to pause it right there. And what I notice is it's definitely uh, the, the red line on the sensor is definitely going to the, the right hand side of the sensor, but the vehicle's turning the wrong way. Look at that. It's not even making an attempt. It's actually turning the wrong way. Well, what do you think you do if, uh, if I'm expecting a, a, a negative result and I'm going in the positive direction? My guess is all I did was I put the wrong, um, I'm going to put this back to 1,000 again, but I'm going to make it negative 1,000. And I'll go to build. That looks good. And now let's see if, we, if we've got it here. Let's see if this thing starts to turn right instead of left. Hey, that's a little bit better. Now, what do you notice here as, as, it's, as it's making these turns is it actually did lose the track, and there's a lot of overshoot and undershoot there as well. Let's see if it can maintain the track here. See how it stopped there for a second? Um, interesting. And a little bit of overshoot and undershoot, and you can see it finding those other, those other markers as well. So here's what I'll tell you. I'm not gonna mess with this anymore. I'm gonna call this good right now, and I'm gonna call all of that good. And you guys can feel free to pause this video. You can type things in. I will tell you the things that you will want to change. I'm not even going to tell you the things you want to change because I think you know what the things are that you want to change. Um, but when you get into the job sheet for this week, what you're going to discover is, let me go into ENGR here real quick, ENGR 2210, and the lab for this week, which will be the uh, Micro Basic Lab 2. Um, when you get into here, there's going to be a few things that I'm going to have you do. And, it's, and none of it is, is terribly difficult. Um, this week, it's probably more just following along and learning a little bit more about the code. So again, it talks about the magnetic strip and the marker strip, so on and so forth. Um, describe the basic operation of simple, uh, simple on-off. What is a dead band when compared to on-off control? The advantage of proportional. Um, you know, determine what do you think these, these different tape positions are. And I've given you the first one here at negative 45, this is negative 50, zero and positive 50. You can see the direction of travel. Um, have you do the, uh, the calculations based upon the table below. Um, use the same equation that we used in the PowerPoint, um, but essentially it's gonna be a tape position uh, multiplied, by, multiplied by your proportional gain and divided by 1,000. In this case, all the throttles were 150, so you'll get a steering command. But here's the big thing. When you guys go to do this, um, what you're going to have to do, the grading that I'm going to do for your, for your HEV, um, you're going to paste that code after you've answered all the questions and got everything ready to go. You've got your code done. You're going to paste that code in the second page here, and then I will... Uh, obviously grade, I'll, I'll copy it and paste it into my AGV SIM and, and, and watch it run. But there's a couple of things I'm gonna be looking for. The most important things, number one, the code should include appropriate comments. So um, what I've done in my example program, I think is very appropriate for comments. So it's a minimum, uh, that amount of, of commenting. You don't need a comment on every single line of code, but where it makes sense, where it explains the activity or explains what a subroutine does, that, that makes a lot of sense. And definitely up at the front where you can include what it is, who did it, you know, what's the goal. Uh, the vehicle must, 
this is a big thing. Must complete one complete loop. That's must complete, complete, complete. Must finish one complete loop in less than 20 seconds. So if I look at what mine does right now, that's why I don't want to do more than what I've done. Boom, I hit start. You can see the time will start here. And I put a little marker right here that you can use as your start finish line. And so I can see I'm at seven, eight, nine, 10. I might get to 20 seconds. Ooh, this might be good enough if you just follow mine. I'd say that's a little too close. Well, that's sad. I actually did one that's within 20 seconds. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know what? I, I want you to get it faster than that. Uh, I don't want you to use my code. I want you to tune it. And I want to tune it such that I don't get any of these stops. So you'll see this thing will stop in the corner here. And then it gets going again. And you'll see down here, I get a little bit of over, overshoot and undershoot, which is fine. Um, you might have saw that in my intro video when I was running code on my, my uh, AGV earlier. Um, but I want to try to minimize that as much as possible. Um, and then the other thing too is if I ever if I stop your vehicle like I just did there, I should be able to hit play and it should start again. That was one of the things I took away one point from several people last week was they visited all three squares, but when they got to the third, the starting square again, they didn't reorient it to face the right direction. So if I hit play again, it would drive off the screen and it wouldn't do the routine again. I want this thing to be able to do the routine again, no matter where I pause it, where I stop it, where I start it. Um, so in this case, if I wait till it's not there, I wonder if I start it now. That's nah, fine. I can't even trick it. So I actually did too good of a demo for you guys. Um, but must complete one complete loop in less than 20 seconds. Vehicle must not lose track. Okay, so there's a good one. I would tell you that my vehicle lost track. If that red light goes away, it lost the track. Um, I'm going to verify this by running at least three complete uh, test loops. So I'm going to paste your code in, watch it go around the circle three times, and it cannot stop. However, if it were to lose the track, I do need to see code that prevents AGV movement without the navigation strip. And the way I'll prove this is I have another loop just like this one where I took out a little section of magnetic strip here. And so then I will run it around there and make sure that it indeed stops when it loses the strip as well. So first off, it shouldn't lose the strip. <laughs> so you need to do that. But in the oddball case where it did, you know, it's on a factory floor and somebody uh, came across with a, you know, whatever, a grinder and ground off part of the strip, you know, um, now all of a sudden it better stop if the strip isn't there. So that kind of gives you guys a good idea of what I'll be looking for this week. Um, I'm going to go into Canvas real quick and just take a look. I think it's right here, actually. Yeah, so we've got the intro video that you can watch. That's kind of a fun one that I uh, I did here in my basement. I brought one of the mini bots home and uh, just kind of ran it around with some of the code like we're writing today. Um, the proportional control video, which is what we're making right now. I'll, I'll publish this as soon as I'm done. The homework, which is the Word document that you got to make sure you submit to me. And then the quiz, um, again, quizzes are open book. They're open book, open note. I ask that you work on them alone, okay? Um, but they are timed at 20 minutes. There's nobody in this class that can't finish this quiz in 20 minutes. And there's nobody in this class that can't finish this on their own. Um, take some notes as you're going through the videos. Um, you don't want to try to scan through the video as you're taking the quiz. I, I'm not saying you can't. However, I will tell you that you just don't have the time to do that. To try to find what you're looking for um, while you're taking the quiz, you're just going to run out of time. So on that note, that would conclude my lecture on uh, control loops and AGV navigation using the MicroBasic script. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, do not hesitate to give me a call, give me an email. Um, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks.